Now, the last thing I want to say is why I stopped personally with the psychedelic spirituality. Why, what, what got me out of it? You know, and for me, I was, you know, living in Berkeley, California. I had all the DMT I wanted, went to the ayahuasca ceremonies, underground ceremonies. Uh, they're probably more above ground now, but generally speaking. Um, and I had access to plenty of LSD and psilocybin. And I kept doing the high doses, high doses, high doses, trying to get into these altered experiences, contact these entities. And I had a lot of strange, interesting, uh, transformative experiences. But I felt like I eventually came to a place like, what? where am I going? What's the point? Do I just keep taking the drugs? Do I keep just looking for spiritual knowledge? Because I was a bit obsessed with like divi diving deep, 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 deep into the psychedelic waters. And so I, again, was had a thriving YouTube channel, listening to all the uh, Terrence McKenna stuff. And I just going deeper and deeper and deeper, more and more and more and more higher doses. And it just felt like I didn't realize what exactly I was going towards. And then this is during my doctorate program. So then I start looking a little bit deeper into my own philosophy and my own worldview. And once I sh saw that there was a lot of things that were coming up short, like the epistemic problems at the paradigmatic level, I believed in an objective morality. But when somebody pushed me to say, well, why, why is that objectively the moral case? Why is that obje the objective ethics? I had a real trouble justifying that within my, my psychedelic paradigm, because again, I was perennial. All religions lead to the same mountaintop, despite the multiplicity of metaphysical, ethical, and epistemological differences between these worldviews. Um, I couldn't really put my finger. I couldn't say what, why is it objectively true? Well, that's just true for you. That's just your truth. That's just your understanding. That's just your framework. And so when I started to really dive deep into how one epistemically justifies their morality and their ethics, you know, I realized that I do believe in certain things that aren't totally consistent with other things that people who promote psychedelics believe in. Uh, when it comes to objective truth, I do believe in objective truth. I do believe that two plus two equals four. And that is in perpetuity. I do believe that the laws of logic are objectively real and they're non-physical. And so that there totally blows out any sort of atheistic worldview because atheism is totally materialistic. And if you believe in a materialistic worldview that starts with the Big Bang and runs forward from there through various cosmological and biological forms of evolution, then the only thing that exists is physical. How then how exactly can you account then for number theory, logic, the law of identity, all these things that are non-physical? right? You can say, yeah, love is just a biochemical. Uh, all these things are just chemicals in your brain. But when it comes to logic, logic is objective. Syllogistic logic is objective. Where does that come from? That's not any material thing. So that's where the atheist and the materialist really struggles from an apologetic or a debate paradigm because they can't justify the idea of objective truth. The best they can do is justify the scientific method for getting to the closest form of any sort of epistemic reliability. So the more I dove into it, the more I felt like my psychedelic worldview was totally inadequate. And then I took a, uh, you know, I did research. I was doing research on the psychedelic gospels. And this led me into thinking, man, I want to read the book. What is it called? Mushrooms, Russia and History. It's a book by R. Gordon Wasson and his wife, pa uh, Valentina Pavlovna. It's a long book. It's very expensive. But you again, shout out to anybody watching. You can actually get a free ebook online and download it. So I got the ebook. And for me, I started looking. I was thinking, geez, OK, I'm in the psychedelics. I'm spiritual, not religious. Yeah. I'm looking at all this stuff. I'm reading this book. I came to the conclusion that, hmm, okay, so I see all these psychedelic frescoes in Western Europe, Italy, Germany, uh, France, and Turkey. And I thought, geez, I bet given the fact that our Gordon Watson's book with his, with his wife, Valentina Pavlovna, uh, Pavlovna, talked about how Slavic languages are much more um, mushroom philic as opposed to mushroom phobic. So in that book, he talks about how Germany and England uh, have very few words for mushrooms. So in English, for example, we have toadstool, fungus, and mushroom, three words to describe that entire species, right? Where in Russian languages and Slavic languages, generally speaking, there's tons and tons and tons of words to describe mushrooms. So I thought, geez, well, given the fact that 
Russia is Orthodox Christian and they have all this iconography, I bet if I go take a PhD course on Orthodox Christianity, I'll be able to study their iconography and I bet I'll find more evidence of psychedelics. I did that, didn't find any psychedelics within Orthodox Christianity, but what I did encounter was Orthodox theology which is an, another framework you can understand it, at least, the, at least the way that I approached it as a non-believer was Logos theology. And I was a non-believer taking this course on the history of the Orthodox Church, something that I wasn't very familiar with, and then looking at its the intricacies and the nuance of its theology, the understanding of the Logos being the metaphysical basis, the understanding of archetypes or the Platonic ideals being these Logi, these Logi, these divine principles in creation, looking at how God became a man so men can become gods by grace, by following in Christ, by crossing that bridge through his incarnation, his in hypostatization, looking at all these things uh, really began to reshape my worldview. Now, I was still a non-believer and I was still, uh, you know, waist deep into my psychedelic uh, practice. But the more the more I dove into it, the more it weighed on my heart, the more and more this Logos theology made sense to me. And, and, um, therefore I, uh, I eventually came to a point where I started to pray. I started to pray before I went to bed. And then this led to eventually, uh, even doing more psychedelic experiences where on LSD, I experienced like, geez, all these things that I like about psychedelics, sacred geometry, fractals, um, the deification of man, um, the, the idea of, of the uni metaphysical unity, the logos, um, the use of logic, all this stuff, it made a lot more sense in the Logos theological paradigm of the Orthodox Christian than my psychedelic worldview, which was a sort of amalgamation of everything that I liked and didn't like about certain worldviews. And so when it came to, again, we're all one, I thought, geez, love your neighbor as yourself, that the Logos gave a metaphysical basis for language, the word, the incarnation of God. It gave a metaphysical basis for sacred geometry and platonic solids. It gave a metaphysical basis for fractal mathematics. It gave a metaphysical basis for aesthetic beauty, act, you know, objective beauty. And this was huge because, again, I was still waist deep in, into my psychedelic practice. But it just it just showed me that the worldview that I had been studying, this whole Orthodox Christianity, offered a lot of things that I liked about psychedelics but I didn't have to give it up. I just had to reorient myself towards what I ultimately really believe deep down. And so that was then one that set me on, on the track. And so, um, that's, as I wrote down, once I started to take orthodoxy seriously, uh, there's been really no turning back from there. And so, um, whether anybody watching this, maybe you're still in the psychedelic spirituality camp. Again, I'm streaming this to my old YouTube channel. That is fine. I'm not here to convince you of my worldview. I'm here to provide value. And hopefully once we get into this article, uh, maybe you'll be able to hear things or learn things you're not familiar with. So um, I'm not here to convert anybody. If what I say is interesting and you dive deeper into it, then, then glory to God and, and, and so be it. But, um, you know, if you don't agree with me, that is fine. You are more than welcome to be here as well. So I just wanted to lay that out there. So.